This video is sponsored by Captain Con. Learn more about Captain Con and its awesome three days of gaming later on in the video. But now, let's talk about some Blood Angels. What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and it's time to do another GT list review thing. I don't know what to call this series yet, but I'm sure we'll come up with something very catchy. Today, we're going to talk about a Space Marine chapter that's basically been the downtrodden underdog of much of 9th edition, and that is Blood Angels, who just took down a GT with a 5-0 record this past weekend. Now, Blood Angels' place in the meta has been... A subject of much controversy in the 40k community since their codex supplement was released. While a lot of players still swear by the Blood Angels, their win rates aren't quite keeping up. And outside of Imperial Fists, they are down in the dumps with one of the worst win rates in 40k. Seriously, they're getting beaten by Tau and Gene Stealer Call. Like, how bad can you be? Unfortunately, being overshadowed by a lot of the other more mainstream Space Marine chapters doesn't help either, with Blood Angels oftentimes just being characterized as kind of a slower, less flexible White Scars. That said, plus one to wound on a bunch of melee attacks is always very good, and the one thing to keep in mind anytime you're talking about the relative power level of a Space Marine chapter is that you're not really talking about an army on its own. While a Space Marine chapter might be viewed by the community as a standalone army, Blood Angels being very different from Ultramarines and Imperial Fists, Raven Guard, all of those different chapter supplements. In reality, they all share the same units. So really, the baseline power level of any one Space Marine chapter still tends to be buoyed up by the best units available to a Space Marine army. While a faction like Blood Angels may not make as good use of very powerful units like Relic and Tempter Dreadnoughts as a sub-faction like Iron Hands might, still getting access to those powerful units and abilities puts them on good footing in comparison comparison to a lot of other factions in the game. So with that in mind, let's get into it and talk about this Blood Angels army that took down a GT 5-0 last weekend. Now first off, this army was piloted by Junior Aflehi from Team Zero Comp, who it should be said is a superlative Blood Angels main and has a lot of GT wins under his belt. Two GT wins as well as several RTT first places with Blood Angels this season alone. He's currently placed 17th in the ITC after his win in this event, the Hammer of Wrath GT by Gameology, and is a pretty common sight around the top tables of other large events. So I'm not surprised at all that a player of this apparent skill and practice with Blood Angels was able to take the faction to a 5-0 victory. Now talking about the list in particular, this is a relatively standard MSU style of Space Marines. While there's a lot of schools of thought with Blood Angels where the correct course of action is to put as many points as possible into large units of Vanguard Veterans or Sanguinary Guard, potentially to combat squad them out and build an army out of melee attackers, I think a more well-rounded approach is actually the correct play. In this case, Junior's taken a patrol plus Vanguard detachment, the patrol coming in with a couple company veterans to help protect the characters and sit on some backline objectives with Lightning Claws and Storm Shields. 54 points for those two relatively resilient models is a pretty good bargain. We also have a captain on a bike with an Inferno pistol. He's been upgraded to the Chapter Master and is bringing on Rites of War along with the Teeth of Terra. We have an infiltrator squad as the troops option in that patrol detachment, as well as two units of sanguinary guard. Two units of seven with their Angelus bolt guns and in Carmine axes. That's going to put them at a strength six AP2 for two damage profile. Keep in mind, however, that Blood Angels do have several ways to manipulate this, with an, a sanguinary priest also in the list, able to put that unit into assault doctrine whenever Junior needs it to be. We also have a unit of Inceptors, four Inceptors with their plasma exterminators. These are a particularly good option for Blood Angels because of their synergy with a lot of the reinforcement step bonuses that Blood Angels can give them. Not only in the Stratagem Descent of Angels, which is going to give them plus one to their hit roll when they come out of Deep Strike, but also giving them access to score the death from above secondary objective if they want to. That will give them two victory points at the end of the turn if that unit comes in from Deep Strike and kills any enemy units any time during the game. Moving on to the Vanguard Detachment, we have a Primaris Chaplain on a bike who's been upgraded to the Master of Sanctity. He's bringing Catechism of Fire, potentially to buff those Inceptors or some of the other ranged attackers in the list, and also Mantra of Strength to buff himself. He's also bringing the Relic Crozius, the Benediction of Fury, but interestingly, not the Wise Orator Warlord trait. We also have that Sanguinary Priest I mentioned earlier. He is Apothecary keyworded, so he's been upgraded to be the Chief Apothecary with the Selfless Healer Warlord trait. He's been upgraded with a Jump Pack and the Icon of the Angel Relic to give reroll charges to everything 
anything within six inches. For the elites of the attachment, we're only bringing a single blade guard veteran squad. These guys, for just three models for 105 points, being relatively difficult to kill with that two plus armor, four plus invulnerable save, and three wounds apiece, also access to transhuman doesn't hurt either, makes them excellent at holding backline objectives or pushing up and holding objectives in the center and potentially scoring some oaths of moment points. We also have the ubiquitous two Relic Contemptor Dreadnoughts, each with two twin Volkite Culverins. No Cyclone Missile Launchers on these guys. We're keeping them cheap as chips, but I think especially if you're going to be trying to push some efficiency out out of one of the slightly less powerful Space Marine supplements, you really do have to look for some of the powerful units in the Codex to take, and Relic Contemptor Dreadnoughts are sh certainly one of those. For only 150 points, those 16 Strength 6, 2 damage shots with the potential for additional Mortal Wounds on top of that is excellent against a wide variety of targets and gives you good baseline long-range firepower. That's being supported by the heavy support slots in this detachment. We have an Eradicator Squad with a single multi belta and last but certainly not least, a Whirlwind with a cast of launcher that's the 2d6 strength 6 0 ap 1 damage missile launcher shot but I imagine in an army based largely around moving aggressively forward with those Blade Guard Veteran and Sanguinary Guard, having access to the Suppressive Fire Stratagem to make enemies fight last is a really big deal. Not to mention the fact that the Whirlwind can potentially deal with some lighter infantry, especially in factions like Drukhari, where if the Inceptors, Eradicators, or Relic Contemptors can peel out a transport, even emergency disembarking beyond line of sight blockers doesn't keep you safe from the firepower of this Blood Angels army, with that Whirlwind potentially able to fire into a light armored unit like witches or cabalite warriors and deal significant damage even out of line of sight so overall definitely a very finesse oriented list msu style with a lot of characters and individual smaller units and i can definitely see why it would be good into a broad spectrum of matchups so speaking of matchups let's talk about the lists that it played against but first let's talk about our sponsor for today captain con <laughs> Captain Con is a phenomenal general gaming convention featuring three days of around-the-clock tabletop gaming. Not only board games and role-playing games, but also a wide variety of miniature games as well. It's running on February 4th through 6th, 2022 in the beautiful, sunny Warwick, Rhode Island. And 2022 will be Captain Con's seventh consecutive year running. While it is a general gaming convention and has fun attractions for gamers of all types, there's even an arcade game room, which is like super sick. Miniature gaming and tabletop gaming is absolutely at the heart of the convention. It started as a big War Machine and Hordes event, but has grown out of just that one game to encompass all sorts of games, including Infinity, A Song of Ice and Fire, Dust Tactics, and... I think most importantly for the people watching this video, a full-fledged two-day Warhammer 40k ITC ranked Grand Tournament. This year, the GT is up to 48 players, and I imagine will be a phenomenal time. Here's some pictures of me attending last Captain Con's ITC GT. I had a great time and highly recommend the experience to anyone who's looking to get another GT under their belt. Personally, I've gone to Captain Con every single year it's been running. It's a big part of my life, and it's been super awesome to see this relatively low local gaming convention grow larger and larger to be something truly global that brings miniature gamers of all stripes playing any game together into one enormous ballroom to play miniature games in the same place and have a great time. The hotel room block and badge sales are now open for the event over at CaptainCon.com. Event signup has also started and new events are being announced constantly. So head on over there. Again, that's CaptainCon.com to get your badge and sign up. Come hang out with me. Anyway, let's get back to talking about some Blood Angels. <laughs> Now, round one, Junior is played against John. John playing Grey Knights, and it looks like the event did use the updated Grey Knights Codex. So we're starting to see some of the first instances of the updated Grey Knights coming out of the woodwork. Unfortunately, even with their upgraded Codex, they weren't able to get through this Blood Angels list. John was bringing a Blades of Victory Patrol led by Kaldor Drago, as well as a Strike Squad, a Brotherhood Ancient, two Inceptor Squads, as well as a Swordbearers Patrol with a Tech Marine, a Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight, another Strike Squad, and an Interceptor Squad, a Venerable Dreadnought, 
as well as a second Nemesis Dread Knight in the heavy support slot. In the past, I know Blood Angels have been a little bit worried about Grey Knights due to the volume of smites that they can deal out, punching through those heavily armored Sanguinary Guards and Storm Shields. But with Junior's list focusing on a more well-rounded approach, bringing a lot of ranged attacks in the list in addition to that melee, I can definitely see how he would have a lot of opportunities to respond to the Grey Knight's Psychic Mastery. It doesn't help either that some beneficial profile matchups, especially with those in Carmine Axes and Volkite Contemptors, matching up pretty well into the only Toughness 6 Nemesis Dread Knights would probably give Junior the ability to kill those relatively quickly if they ever expose themselves. And that gave Junior a big win round 1, 99 to 69. Hey, <laughs> nice. That catapulted the Blood Angels into round two, where Junior played against Chris, who's running a mixed chaos list featuring a Nurgle detachment as well as a detachment of Emperor's Children. This Nurgle detachment bringing three Plague Burst Crawlers, two units of Furies to perform actions, as well as a unit of Nurglings and a Poxbringer to fill out the HQ. That's followed up with an Emperor's Children patrol detachment bringing a Sorcerer, a Demon Prince with a Raiment Repulsive, as well as 10 Chaos Cultists and two units of 10 Chaos Terminators with Lightning Claws and Bolters, as well as a big unit of Bikers with Combi Meltas. That's going to allow the Bikers to make use of abilities like Veterans of the Long War plus Endless Cacophony to deal significant damage with a powerful Alpha Strike off those fast-moving models, and the Terminators can make use of Honor the Prince to make long charges out of Deep Strike. Follow that up with some pretty solid shooting from the Plague Burst Crawlers and their indirect fire, and you have what is a pretty well-rounded list. Now, I am a little upset that we're not seeing any Noise Marines coming out of the Chaos Space Marine list. Those have a place in my heart, but I can definitely see that having the more aggressive Terminators, bringing that Honor the Prince to make those big charges is a little bit more aggressive and potentially a little bit more optimal. Now, unfortunately, especially against an army composed almost entirely of two damage weapons, focusing on those Terminators doesn't go super well for the Chaos Space Marines. Because there are only two wound terminators, because we still don't have the defensive upgrade on those Chaos Space Marines yet somehow, that means that once those guys commit, they can potentially deal some significant damage, although effects like the Sanguinary Guard being minus one to hit in melee is difficult to get through. But as soon as they're committed, they're probably going to get taken down relatively quickly by those two damage attacks that the Blood Angels list has in swathes. That was able to give Junior another relatively big win, 94 to Chris's 72. Although not a blowout game, it should be said. Only about a 20 point differential is pretty close. That moves us on to round three, where Junior played a very close game against Jackson. Jackson was playing in Necrons, this time a relentlessly expansionist Eternal Conquerors Necron build, bringing two patrol detachments, including a Catacomb Command Barge, a unit of Warriors, a unit of Scorpec Destroyers, and Canoptic Wraiths, as well as three Locust Heavy Destroyers in the first patrol detachment. Following that up with the second, bringing a Chronomancer, additional Necron Warriors to hold objectives, a Nightbringer, five Lich Guard, a big unit of nine Canoptic Scarabs, as well as three Canoptic Wraiths and two Annihilation Barges. Now, the primary objective control that Necrons can bring to the table using this Eternal Conqueror's sub-faction trait is very powerful. And even when they're losing on attrition, which they can, especially against two damage melee attacks and shooting, matching up very well into units like those Canoptic Scarabs and Lich Guard, they're able to wrest control of those primary objectives from the other player and keep their score very low. That's probably why we see Junior down only at a 75 point win against Jackson Hoffman's 57. That said, if you can kill the Necrons fast enough so they aren't able to retain that primary objective control for the entirety of the game, you can squeak by a win, and I imagine and that's what happened in this matchup. That moved us on to round four, where Junior had another close game against Carlos Grey Knights once again. This time we're bringing a battalion detachment out of Rapiers that was led by a Brotherhood Chaplain, a Grandmaster and Nemesis Dread Knight, as well as Caldor Drago, two units of Terminators, as well as a Strike Squad, one Brotherhood Apothecary with a big Nemesis Demon Hammer, two units of Servitors to perform objectives, as well as three Interceptor Squads and two Rhinos. Given that Junior was already able to take down Grey Knights in round one, it stands to reason that he would be practicing the matchup and would be able to squeak out a win in round four. This time, 75 to 54. Again, another relatively close game and we're really seeing him squeak out these wins with not huge margins that moved us on to the final round round five where junior played against danny kwan this time it was a space marine mirror match danny playing dark angels and bringing a patrol detachment plus a vanguard the vanguard was running the smash interrogator chaplain bringing calibinate knight as well as the mantra of strength plus that teeth of terra to deal maximum damage we have a talon master in that detachment as well and a bunch of Deathwing, one unit of Blagar veterans, two Deathwing command squads, a unit of Deathwing knights, as well as a Ravenwing apothecary and champion. 
In the patrol detachment, we have Sam Al, as well as a unit of Assault Intercessors, two Relic Attempters, several Inceptors. Now, I can definitely see those Deathwing being a problem for a list like Junior's, although the extra attack out of the Assault Doctrine bonus that Blood Angels have can help a lot to get through that annoying transhuman effect. Now, the downside of Deathwing is that without the support of a lot of Ravenwing units, they tend to be very slow. And with an army that has a base 12 inch movement across a lot of the infantry in addition to that plus one inch to advance and charge and reroll charges potentially out of the icon of the angel that means that the blood angels can essentially pick their engagements and that's the real downside of those deathwing units is that you know being only speed five or six they are relatively slow and don't really have any ways to increase their threat range they sort of have to take the hit on the chin and especially against a high volume of pretty high ap attacks that only relying on that transhuman to save them doesn't work super well so you can imagine that a full unit of sanguine guard once the assault doctrine is active to give them plus one attack potentially plus one to hit from standing near the warlord and becoming ap3 to chew through the thunder hammer storm shield on these deathwing command squads they should be able to take out a deathwing command squad with the charge now unfortunately basically removing the plus one to wound off of the blood angels chapter tactic does suck a lot but that plus one attack certainly helps get them over the hump of dealing with these deathwing units it's good to see dark angels up at the top i know they've been doing pretty well recently but i think the lists that tend to be very consistent tend to focus a little bit more on the faster units with a core of these deathwing whereas this list seems a little bit of the opposite which is focusing more on the deathwing with a little bit of the raven wing flavor splashed in there as well that ended up being a big win to junior 100 points to 62 and that gave him the victory points to squeak out first place over the second place also undefeated player jason mckenzie who's bringing adeptus mechanicus that's right in this gt blood angels beat out adeptus mechanicus for first place take that admac so overall excellent showing from junior and his blood angels in this event now he did dodge a lot of the boogeymen of the meta i don't know how his list plays into adeptus mechanicus i can't imagine that it's particularly consistent we also saw a reasonable amount of drukari in the event but none of them did particularly well uh, they did make it up to sixth place with with jeff pool but we are seeing some of the new factions start to strut their stuff with carlos taking fourth with gray knights and ali huang playing thousand sons to take fifth that said it does go to show you that not everyone at gts is playing the very top cutting edge of the metagame most players play what they're comfortable with or what they enjoy playing and that means especially now that we are seeing some of those higher ranked factions get toned down a little bit and a lot of players are dropping them for factions that they have more fun playing or are a little bit more more comfortable with it is possible to go to one of these events with maybe a little bit of a subpar faction and simply try to dodge those matchups if you're able to do that and are able to play against a wide variety of opponents even with an army that has a relatively poor win percentage but is buoyed up by some of those powerful space marine options you can definitely take down a gt so huge congratulations again to junior for taking it down with blood angels throw a shout out to jason again as well for going undefeated in the event even though he wasn't able to take first and that's going to be all of our discussion for today Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed this discussion on Blood Angels and their recent 5-0. I want to throw a shout out again to Captain Con for sponsoring the video. I really appreciate it. As well as a shout out to everyone who supports the channel over on Patreon at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise. YouTube channel members and Twitch subscribers as well. All of you are phenomenal. And I want to remind you to keep it classy and have happy wargaming.